Drive time, I'm Fiona Stalker. It's coming up to 20 past five on air with you until six o'clock. Now, the website OnlyFans says it plans to block sexually explicit photos and videos from October. For those who don't know, basically creators can use social media platforms to post a range of content from cooking to fitness videos, but it's perhaps best known for porn. While users can post nude videos and photos and charge subscribers for tips or a monthly fee. But only fans said this will change after pressure from banking partners. Careful how I said that. Let's talk to technology journalist Louise Blaine and Alice Mayflower who regularly post sexually explicit videos and photos on the site. Louise, I'm going to ask you, first of all, for those of us who don't know, um, what is OnlyFans. Some, some will know someone. I suspect producer Greg spent quite a lot of his day just finding out what OnlyFans was, purely for research. For those who haven't, uh, what's it all about? So OnlyFans is a, is a subscription website. So what happens is you would pay a subscription, you would pay a fee or you would pay tips. And in exchange for that, you would get uh, content from the people that you follow. So you would follow someone and say, I would like to I would like to tip you or subscribe to your content. And then you would just get it. So it's a lot like Patreon, which is a s- similar subscription service. But what's happening here is that OnlyFans, which has become very well known for pornography and adult content, and it has, you know, it's made, it handled last year when lockdown uh, will be went into lockdown two billion dollars and it took wow. 20 per- it was happy wow. to take 20 percent of those fees because say when you buy something on ebay they take some of your fees it's exactly the same so only fans will take a percentage of whatever the creators make and that's how they've been running so the fact that now they're saying oh no all of those all of that money that you've made us we're actually just going to use and we're going to turn it into a we're going to make it online you know uh, fitness and cooking and other creative content and they're really turning their back on who has been making them an awful lot of money and that's that's exactly what's happening here and they're blaming they're saying that it's because of their banking partners and their payment providers that they are they're doing it on behalf of those but it's it's a really big decision here and and it's really turning their back on those that have made them an awful lot of money all right that's brilliant context and i like you practicing banking partner so i got that right alice um come to you next how much would you make a month on only fans would you say hi Fiona thanks Hiya. for having me um I would generally I would just like to say I'm not amongst the top earners I earn somewhere between 200 to 400 pounds a month off of only fans specifically okay so uh, bearing in mind it's uh, just before 5 30 um, we're a family show of course but mm-hmm. give us a flavor um of the type of stuff that you would post feeling slightly anxious because we're live but just just <laughs> get, bearing that in mind don't worry, don't give worry. us an idea I'm very family friendly <laughs> um it's mostly photos and videos quite often of an explicit nature but some could be construed as more glamour modeling um than anything else really um for a lot of subscribers it's more about getting specific content or specific connections and building that sort of interpersonal relationship with the content creator Okay. And what do you think of these changes then, Alice? I am not entirely surprised by them. It has been something that we've seen time and time again on multiple different platforms. Um, Funnily enough, Louise mentioning Patreon there. Patreon at one time was quite popular with sex workers because they were, for a time, somewhat safe for sex workers to be using. Um, How do you mean safe? What, What does that mean, Alice? Um, So in this context, when I'm saying safe, I mean that sex workers could post sexual content without fear of losing their money, having their accounts shut down, that sort of thing. Um, I think the new changes are going to cause a lot of sex workers to lose income, to lose subscribers. One of the biggest issues that sex workers and especially online sex workers face is not just finding a platform that they can post their content on, but finding a platform that their subscribers feel comfortable actually interacting with. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many different sites that work just like OnlyFans, but they don't have the popularity, they don't have the mainstream in the news sort of... It's a big name, isn't it? Such a yeah. name. Uh, and if I can ask you what, what it's been like as a sex worker during this pandemic, as a subject that we have touched on before, and um, what has that been like? It's been really difficult, um, to put it simply. Um, it's overnight, 
income has disappeared. I've been extremely fortunate that I've had other streams of income that I was able to rely on for the majority of the pandemic. Um, but sort of as we're coming out, people are going out, there's less money being spent online. There's this uncertainty as to what people can and can't do and it just left everyone really scared. And is it, so it's it's a safer place in a way, this type, uh, uh, like OnlyFans or something like that, and obviously we can mention other ones, but is it because mm-hmm. it, it is safer in some ways? In some ways, certainly. Like, it's not without risks and I would never want to give anyone the idea that it's an entirely safe way of doing sex work. But it's certainly one of the safest ways to be involved in sex work. And, and Louise, it, the, the figure that you mentioned there, the, the amount of money, it, it, I think I, I was surprised by that. It's absolutely staggering, the popularity of sites like this. It's huge, isn't it? Is that, is that grown up, you know, um, over the last year or so, is, or, or has this just suddenly exploded? I think the thing is that all of these techs, I mean, everything tech that we have that has really increased in popularity over lockdown was always there. I mean, OnlyFans was, I think it was created in 2016. So, I mean, we're, we're five years in. So, but the increase in obviously people realising what they can what they can find online and what's there online and then the success of particular, you know, success of particular brands like OnlyFans, you know, like Netflix, like Zoom, suddenly these big brands, they come, you know, they come crashing in and suddenly that's that's who's in charge. But then suddenly, as we find with so many social media sites, suddenly um, changes come in, regulations come in and huge changes happen. And what this has done is it's doing it so that they're saying that they can make more money in future by sort of then releasing an app, which would then be safe for work instead of not safe for work. So they're trying to take away all of this. And it tends to be what happens in big tech. Well, thank you to both of you. Very illuminating. That's Alice Mayfler and technology journalist Louise Blaine there. You're listening to Drive Time.